Hey everyone, before I get into today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to Ryan Nelson, aka Sonic Artist 14 on PSN, for giving me ideas and sharing with me his thoughts as I experimented Dragon League for the last two weeks or so. Um, he was willing enough to kind of share me different versions that he was making of Dragon Link himself. I particularly like this build here where he's using Black Metal Dragon to search out Red Eyes uh, Black Mythic Dragon. And that is a nice little starter extender engine that you can be using in this deck. And I thought it was a really, really cool idea. So I just wanted to give him a quick shout and say thank you for the help advice over the last two weeks, man. I really, really do appreciate it. If you at home maybe have an idea that you want to share with me, feel free to add me on PSN. I'm always listening and I'm always willing to go back and read messages even if I'm, I look like I'm online a lot but I'm not, well, I'm, I'm not always there. So I apologise if I do miss your messages. And I'm also thinking about maybe doing something on Discord, maybe a Discord server. And um, if you want to add me to Discord, that is Sean Versus, hashtag 5486. And um, if people are interested, let me know down in the comments down below and maybe I'll make a server of some sort. Anyway, let's get into today's video. I feel like I've got a lisp or I'm just talking to spit in my mouth. Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to Ryan Nelson aka Sonic Artist 14 Over the last two weeks he's been sharing me ideas that he's been coming up with for Dragon Ink and testing the deck out himself And um, I really really do appreciate him sharing his thoughts because he helped me kind of make sense of my own I particularly like the idea he had in this screenshot here where he was trying out Black Metal Dragon to search out Red Eyes Black Malefic Dragon So you've got a starter kind of extender engine for the Dragon Link deck which is all this deck is really about. Uh, so thank you out very much Ryan, I really do appreciate that. If you have any ideas for this game or you want to share anything unique or special, feel free to add me to PSN, I'm Stan my main aka Sean Versus. And also I'm thinking about maybe using Discord a little bit more, so my account on that is Sean Versus hashtag 5486. I might make a server or something, I don't know how to, but I'll maybe work it out. If that sounds interesting to you guys, let me know down in the comments down below and I'll work my way towards it. But alright, so let's get into today's video and yep, yeah, thank you very much Ryan, appreciate it. Recording video for a deck like Dragon Ink can be kind of tricky because it's a lot like playing Solitaire. Um, you're, it's all about building your strongest board possible and then your opponent can either break it or they don't and then you win the game. There isn't a whole lot of interaction going on through there, so... I kind of wanted to make today's video with a little bit more interaction that lasted more than just say, hey, here's the combo, off you go, uh, go and learn it yourself. And so I went online and played a couple of games and that is what this game was. Now we started with this game already started because I didn't record the whole lot of it, but um, all you've really missed there is I've got into the Romulus play, which by now you've probably seen hundreds of times on my channel already. So Romulus is going to go and add Dragon Ravine. And Dragon Ravine is going to use the effect. And we have a lot of cards in our hand that work just well in the graveyard. And so we're going to start discarding cards and getting them out of our hand. And swapping them for better cards that work better in our hand and searching those out instead. So we're going to first discard out Jet Synchron, um, the MVP. And then we're going to go and send to our graveyard uh, probably a copy of Destrudo, I would say. Yeah, let's do Destrudo. Because... Um, We've already gone, we've got Absorat in our hand already, and when we activate Jet Synchro's effect, we'll be able to discard another card, so goodbye uh, Absorata. Although, I didn't actually, <laughs> thinking about it now, I don't actually need to use Jet Synchro right now, just thinking about it, because if I go to LP, and then I go to um, uh, Omnibrotar, then uh, I'll have to discard anyway for that effect. But, actually, no, no, it makes sense, actually, you know, this is fine, because, um, I don't have an extender really that I want to, oh well, in order to do the guard dragon combo which is what I'm going to go do now is um, I need two dragons on the field. So I had to use Absorata's effect to go search a dragon and then I can use boot set to launch to activate its effect and summon that dragon to the field. And so um, we're going to use boot set to now. Boot set is pretty good. I really really like boot set to launch. Um, the fact that he can either be a monster reborn or just like a double summon is crazy. And so we're going to use the effect and I'm going to chain quick launch to it, which is another really good spell card. And we're going to summon out Rocket Synchron and we're going to summon out Rocket Tracer. And this will allow us to go into our card Dragon Plane, as we've done many, many times before. 
Yeah, this deck is pretty good. I did get asked a really unique question. Um, someone was asking me, how do I think this deck compares to other tier 1 decks, such as Looney Lights, um, Spirals, and, um, well, he was mainly referring to combo decks, but then there's also Invoked as well, which is a very powerful deck. I think this deck does really, really well. I think if the timer wasn't a thing, I think this deck would be the best deck in the game. I definitely do. Um, but with the online timer, it's a bit difficult to say. Uh, he made a good, really, really good point where um, Lunar Light and both Sp Lunar Light and Spiral can set up a similar board full of Negate or Floodgate style boss monsters, where uh, like like Baguska or Ab Abistwella, and they don't have to do uh, have to have go through as much effort as a Dragolink does in order to set up that board. It goes gets to that board a lot quicker, and um, they can also be very versatile and answer some of these situations. And you know what? I'll be honest with you, I don't really know. Um, I kind of agree with him in that way. That um, Dragon League, it takes a lot of work to learn. The payoff is definitely there. The payoff is definitely fantastic. But with this limited time thing um, on uh, online mode, which I don't say, I'm not saying it's a bad thing or, or anything like that, actually. I think um, it's good to have a timer because people get bored just sitting around waiting for someone to finish their turn. And especially when you're playing online, people will sit there and just think and think and think and they'll waste so much time. And if you're not playing like an online simulator like Dueling Book where you've got judges that you can go and call, they might just waste all the time in a match and um, because they know they're going to lose and so they're just going to sit there waiting for you to time out or quit and therefore they get the win. So I definitely think having a timer is a good idea but um, when you're playing a deck like this it's definitely limiting because you can't really, you're, you're panicking all the time, uh, you're rushing to try to finish your combo and you're trying to think what is the best play. And um, you just got to instantly work it out. So decks like Lunar Lights and Spiral, they are a lot more linear in the way they play. Dragon League is very, very flexible where you can do different ways and get to uh, different results. Whereas Lunar Lights is always like turn one, you want to make uh, Gamma Redua and Baguska or Abyss Dweller. And with Spirals, you always pretty much want to go always into Trigate Wizard uh, with, um, say, Cerberus connected to it. Or um, having a sleeper on the field so you can pop stuff in the field, Appaloosa. It's, um, it's a lot more, uh, I would say it's restrictive because it's still a very flexible deck. But it's a lot more restrictive than Dragon Link is. And um, I actually don't know. So if you guys have an opinion on what you think is a better deck out of those ones, uh, let me know in the comments down below. So speaking of the timer, uh, and the reason why there's interaction in this game and it's not just break, um, set up your board is because I was running out of time and I had to just say, all right, we've got one interaction, Heretic Seal, fingers crossed and pass. Uh, it's not really great. I mean, Sayuja kind of is a wall because he's 2800 attack and you've got Jet Synchro on the field. Uh, if I had the time, after this point in the combo, I could have made Christian Haki Firebucks, done the Aurora Dom play and all of that. But we uh, didn't have enough time, and I shouldn't have really gone for that play, to be honest with you. I, by now, I know how much time there is, and I've practiced enough. But it's like, do you go for your best potential, or do you just like hinder yourself just because you're worried about the timer? Speaking of it, things to be worried about, my opponent has is going a blind second, and they activated evenly match. If you don't know what evenly match does, this is a great card to counter combo style decks like um, Dragon Link. Uh, because you go to the end, of, you go for your turn, you go to your battle phase, you end your battle phase, and at the end of the battle phase, if you have no cards on your field, you can activate it from your hand. An evenly match makes it so that your opponent has to banish cards from their field until they control the same number of cards that you do. So because you have evenly matched in the field, that's one card, your opponent has to banish all their cards until they only have one card. It's really, really good for breaking boards and going second. Um, I used to use it quite a lot when I used to play competitive um, and what's really great about evenly matched as well is that it doesn't affect the monsters it affects the player and by this what I mean is if you have a monster if I, I might get this wrong um, I'm pretty, pretty sure that if you have a monster that says it's unaffected by trap effects for example your the trap isn't affecting the monster itself it's actually affecting the player and the player has to choose what cards they're gonna banish face down so it will still hit those types of um, types of cards it's a really, really good counter card. And to see someone playing it in a, a blind second deck on Legacy of the Duelist is really, really interesting because Evenly Matched is one of those kind of cards where it's really, really only good when you know 100% of the time you're going to go second. If you go first 
um, it's not going to be impactful because you're going to have cards on the field and so your opponent isn't going to have to be have to banish as many when you come to activate it but it seems to be working for big hunter 666 as he now goes and summons out scarlet red hot dragon archfiend oh scarlet red dragon archfiend and this is going to have an effect where it can destroy all monsters on the field that are special summoned uh, with an attack value less than what he has. Now, fortunately for me, I have Omni Dragon Brotar in the graveyard, and that triggers its effect to summon itself back to the field. And then when it has summoned to the field, we can use its effect to discard a card, choose a monster on the field, and get a monster of the same type that you chose. So we are going to be able to search out any Dark Dragon monster. So I discard Starly Safer and go and grab Rocket Tracer, which I'm going to be wanting to use a little bit later on. So the question here is, I'm not going, um, we're on turn 3 now, I have Rocket Tracer, Levianir, and Romulus, what can I do with this deck in a game state like this? Well, let's see and find out. Having a look at my extra deck, I've only got 9 cards left, I've got uh, Black Rose Dragon, which would be nice to put on the field, but it'll blow up all everything on the field. I've got the Strudo in Grave, amazing card to have in Grave in a situation like this. Um, we've got Cyframe Gear Omega still, we've got... Um, F.A. Dawn Dragster still, I've got Rocket Tracer in my hand and I've got Chaos Dragon Living there. So we're going to use Chaos Dragon Living there first and in my graveyard I have a variety of dark and light monsters but we are going to go for three dark monsters. Because Scarlight, Red Dragon, Archfiend doesn't have any kind of quick effects, I'm not really worried about him. All I have to really worry about is any card that's in my opponent's hand. So first let's uh, activate the effect of Living there. Shuffle one card from my opponent's hand and get rid of that. If I was worried about Scarlight Red uh, um, Dragon Archfiend, I would have maybe instead have used the uh, Levianir's other effect to destroy cards on the field, and that way I can play the game later on. Now, um, having Brotons on the field is nice because we can use the Struder's effect to summon it to the graveyard. We pay half our life points and it will become a, a level, uh, it will reduce its level by the level of the monster I chose. So it will hit the field as level 6 and um, uh, Broto is level 1. So we can use these two to go into um, a level 7 synchro. But instead, I'm going to go for Christian Hockey Firebacks. And guess what? I ha still have all my Christian Hockey Firebacks play cards in my deck. So my Guard Dragon combo has been is no longer going to be able to be used. So I can just go ahead and use my uh, Hockey Firebacks combo. So here comes Despot 001 to the field. Now we go into Aurora Don. Oh, well, we're done. we'll do his thing, we'll give him some tokens. Um, always be careful though, if you ever go into um, Aurora Dawn in a state like this, you have to make sure if you're going to use Despot 001 and Aurora Dawn together, you need four monster zones empty, so just be aware of that. Um, that uh, you have to have some empty zones for it to work, otherwise you won't get the full effect or full benefit of this. Um, but even if you didn't, Aurora Dawn can still uh, destroy cards on the field. By distributing one monster, so it's still really, really good to summon anyway. So, uh, Despot 001 hits the field, he's now got 3000 attack. So, if I want to, I can just crash that into Scarlight Red. But we're going to keep the play going, and we're going to use Aurora Dawn, and we're going to use its effect to tribute one monster on our field, and uh, another one, or two monsters on our field, to summon out a Mecha Phantom Beast from our deck. And so, we're going to use Levy in there and a token. I normally use Aurora Dawn as a token, but Levianir can't attack the turn it uses its effect. So Aurora Dawn can attack, so I might as well keep that on the field instead of uh, Levianir. Now, uh, we've got our uh, two uh, and our two tokens on the field, so um, we'll be able to summon out a level 8. I don't want to go into um, Borrow Load Savage just yet, I want to save that for later on. And so we're going to go for Cyframe Lord Omega. Uh, this is a little bit different from the build I posted yesterday because I I really had uh, I think I had two Borrowed Old Savages in that build, or maybe I actually had Omega. There was a point in time when I would actually switch to two Borrowed Old Savages, but then I decided that I would go back to some variety because um, sometimes um, having two Borrowed Old Savages on the field doesn't do anything because you can only use one of their effects per turn, but. Um, there really isn't another level 8 synchro that is as good as Borrow Load Savage. So I'm kind of working with what different ones see what works. It's either going to be Omega or Draco Berserker of the Tenny. But really, um, I, I, there were, there were, you wish there was uh, another kind of like Omni Negate like Borrow Load Savage that you could use as well. 
So, um, I banished the card out of my opponent's hand using Omega, um, so that's one less threat to deal with. And now we've got a negate on the field, we've got Borrow Load Savage on the field, by normal summoning Rocket Tracer, using its effect to destroy a card, and then um, going into a Synchro Summon. Um, I did mess up a little bit here, I was actually planning to go to Herald of the Arc Light, but because I used Rocket Tracer's effect to go into my Borrow Load Savage, I locked myself into Dark Dragon Monsters. So I've only got Borrow Load Savage on the field and a 1500 Despot Series 01. So we're going to make it work with that instead. So um, but what is nice, um, because we had Saryuja earlier on in the, and now it's in the graveyard, uh, Borrow Load Savage now has four Borrow Counters on it. So that's going to give us four turns worth of negates if he manages to survive that long. Before we end this turn, we're going to banish Starly Safe from our graveyard and add back the Chaos Dragon Levionaire. This is how resilient this deck is. And I think this may be actually the answer to my question that I had earlier about how good is it versus uh, compared to things like Lunar Lights and um, Spirals. This deck just keeps on going. Um, Spirals and Lunar Lights, they can keep on going once they've done their whole board. But I do, most of the time, if you break their board, um, well, it depends on the game state. It's too, it, I don't want to just outright say they can't carry on playing. Um, it, it's too... Uh, uh, too broad of a statement to say but dragon link definitely can keep going because they have so many cards that have good graveyard effects you've got good graveyard recursion you've got so many ways to extend um your cards just keep on coming back um as you can see here i was able just to keep it going and keep this board uh, rebuild a different board with just as much interaction as i would if it was my first term we bought uh, we uh, banished the last couple of cards in our graveyard to summon out Livionaire one more time. He is putting in some serious work in this duel. And uh, Livionaire is going to destroy two, up to two cards in the field. Polar's only got one, so we'll get rid of that. And then we've got our Omega. We could... Um, I want to go for game this turn. So um, I thought about... Uh, I, I wanted to use Omega's effect, but I kind of don't really want to use it because I want to swing for game. My opponent responds to tuning with Ash. So I'm not even going to worry about Omega's effect because... Really, once he's used Ash, is he going to have any other interaction right now? Probably not. So, why don't we just attack the game? Uh, 4,400 plus, two, uh, plus 2,000 is 6,400. Plus 800 is 7,200. Plus 1,500 is 7,700. 8,700 damage. That is going to be game. And so this is a look at what Dragon Link is like. With a little bit more interaction than normal. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care.